raging. Hallelujah. Definitely is my shelter. We're grateful, God, for another Sunday he has blessed us to see. Can you believe that today is the first Sunday of March? God has blessed us to make it this far, and we're grateful to God even for that. Amen. He has been good to us. Hallelujah. And we have no other reason but to praise him on today. Amen. We're going to open up with prayer, scripture, and then we're going to hear the word of God even on today. Amen. Because God has blessed us, and we have a reason. Amen. I used to hear a missionary from the South used to say, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. And I got a reason, amen, to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His righteousness has he openly showed to the sight of the heathen. 
He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. That is Psalms 98, 1 through 3. May God add a blessing to the reader, hears, and doers of his word. Amen. As I said, we're grateful to God for another Sunday that he has blessed us to see. God has been so good to us. As I said in the prayer, he allowed breath to come into our bodies. Amen. If we don't have any other reason to thank him, let's thank him for that on today. Amen. We're just grateful to God. Amen. For each and every one. Those who have been tuning in and watching all of the services. We know we're here on Sundays, but even Tuesday through Friday, everyone that has been consistent in watching, we appreciate each and every one of you. Even those that are new to Elwood Memorial, for the first time listening to us, we thank you for scrolling by even on today, for swiping and watching us even on today. Amen. Because we all we want to do is lift up the name of Jesus. We know that this week coming up, even as last week, on Tuesday we'll be back to Bible Basics, where we just started from the beginning, teaching about salvation, the Holy Ghost, and prayer. As you know, last week we talked about fasting. I will be doing part two on this Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Wednesday night is a night from teaching of our pastor, encouraging scripture as well as prayer. Thursday night prayer, and then Friday night you get five minutes with First Lady. Amen. All those services will begin at 6 o'clock p.m. on Facebook Live as well as on our call, conference call line. Amen. If you do not know our conference call number, please put a notation down in the comments. Amen. And any other questions or any situations you need prayer for, put it in the comments for us. I will go back later on today and go through there. We're just glad for each and every one of you and for you uphold, helping us to uphold the kingdom of God. Many of you have given your offerings. We appreciate it, whether it be by Cash App, Dollar Sign, Elmwood Memorial. We appreciate that. Whether or not you use Givelify, which is Elmwood Memorial Church of, Church of God in Christ. Or we have those who mail it to the church at 5048, Dr. Martin Luther King Drive, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Or those who just come on by and put it in the mailbox. Either way you do it, whether it's cash out, give a fire, or put a 55 cent stamp on that letter, we thank you for what you have given to this ministry. You have helped us to sustain ourselves through the pandemic and beyond. So we thank each and every one of you. Amen. God has been so good and so kind. As a reminder, I need you all to remember and listen up. Next Sunday is Daylight Savings. We spring forward one hour on our clocks. Please remember to do that. Amen. You don't want to be behind on next week. So set that clock up one hour because it is daylight savings. I believe it was about three weeks ago, Pastor Buckner was walking through the house and early in the morning, he says, oh, I believe we're getting ready to have a time change. He said, because it's mighty light. Amen. So we got that time change coming on next Sunday. Amen. So we're grateful to God for that. Also remember to change your batteries in your smoke detectors as well as your carbon monoxide uh, devices. Please change all those batteries at that time as well for your safety. Amen. So we're just grateful to God for today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing a short song here and then we will uh, be in the hands of our pastor. Amen. If you ever need a friend that speaks closer than any brother, I recommend Jesus. Jesus, because.
bless you. Amen. We thank and praise God for you being with us here on today. And we thank and praise God just for all that God is. Yes, yes. I don't know about you, but God is just, he is that kind of a friend. Amen. He knows everything there is to know about us. And yet and still, amen, let's just be honest. All of us are not good. There's some bad things we still got in us sometimes. But yet the Lord knows everything about us. But he yet still sees about us and is concerned about us. And I'm just grateful that we have that kind of a friend. Thank you, God. And you ought to, if you don't know him, you need to get to know him. Mm -hmm. Know him not only as your friend, but know him as your brother. Know him as your savior. Amen. The savior, amen, of your soul. Amen. We again thank and praise God. We give honor to God for all he is doing. Amen. He is the head of our life. We praise him for salvation, for the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank and praise God for those who are here with us in the sanctuary on today. Amen. We are giving great, uh, again, honor to, to the Lord and again to my wife. Amen. First lady that you heard just uh, singing and opening the service. Amen. Did a beautiful job even with our Sunday school. Amen. We thank and praise God for her. We're grateful also, amen, for Lucas Brown sharing his music ministry. Amen. God bless him on today. Amen. I'm thankful, amen. I don't, I don't want to slice your name up, amen, but I'm glad for amen. My brother being here with us on the drums today. Amen. I'm praying and thanking God for Sister Amanda, amen, making sure that he got here on today, amen, to be with us, amen. We appreciate, amen, you bringing him here, here to be with us and to share, amen, his talents as well. Amen. As they say, we're in this together. We're all working towards the upbuilding of the kingdom of yes, God. And I'm saying to those of you, amen, we know we have people who are watching us now by Facebook. Amen. You hear me say it every Sunday just about, amen, that we know our God is not a God of selfishness, but he is a God of sharing. Yes. So I say to you, if you're watching us on Facebook right now, share that thing. Let somebody else know. Don't be selfish, amen. Be an instrument of God and share this page with someone else that they might also be able to participate in this worship experience. Amen. We are again just grateful to God for all that he continues to do in our lives. Amen. Because he is wonderful. Yes. Amen. He is worthy of all praise and worthy of all of the glory. Amen. We're getting ready to pray and then we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. God has a word for us on today. So God, we thank you. We praise you for this day. We thank you for how you have watched over us. How you have protected us even up until this present time. For Lord, you have been good to us. You have been better than good unto us. You have protected us. You have shielded us even from danger seen and unseen. And God, we just thank you for it. We thank you even for healing our bodies. We thank you for deliverance, God. We thank you even for in the midst of this pandemic. That God, you have kept us. Oh, some, oh God, have even contracted the disease. And God, we have testimony that you healed them of it. God, I thank you right now. And we praise you for it. And we thank you, dear God, for some, oh God, who are yet living in it and have not even received even a positive test of it. Because God, you have protected them. It's not because of necessarily because of the masking, because of the social distancing. But God, it's because you, you have kept your hand of protection upon us. And we acknowledge you, God, and we give you all the praise and the glory. And God, we just ask even now that you're ready to share within your word. That, Lord, you would open up my mouth. You would give me the words to say. Give me the how to say it. Let it, oh God, come as you have given it unto me. That your people would be blessed, oh God. Your people would be uplifted and would be encouraged. And God, we're going to thank you even right now. Because we already know, God, that we have the victory. We already know that this is going to be a successful word. God, you are going to bless your word. You're going to get all the glory out of it and all of the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless on today. Amen. As mentioned before, we're going to go to the book of Jeremiah. Amen. The 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Amen. We'll be reading verses 10 through 14. And I just want to share uh, again, as I often say, people say, you know, I'm not going to be long. Well, I'm not going to promise I'm not going to be long. I'm going to say I'm going to be medium on today. Amen. I'm going to be medium on today. I'm not going to be long-winded, but I'm not going to be short either. But I'm not going to be, amen. I'm going to be in the middle, all right? Amen. But I believe God has something for us on today. Amen. I do want to make this quick announcement while I'm here. Amen. At this point in time, I know we have been in pandemic for a good while. And during the pandemic, we have 
if you will, we have because we have been uh, doing these services and not doing them in person, we've been doing them, if you will, in this manner uh, over the line. And so we're going to be taking steps on this week so that next Sunday, next Sunday, amen, we will be observing Holy Communion. Amen. We want to make sure, we don't want to never forget, amen, the sacrifice that our Lord, amen, did for us on the cross. And we want to make sure that we, again, honor that because he commanded that we should do that. So we will be doing that on next Sunday morning. To those members here locally who will be getting with you, amen, who desire to participate, maybe you might, might not be able to make it down here, amen, and I understand all of that, but we will make certain that we get supplies to you, amen, and those that would desire to participate, maybe don't live here in the city, but you yet want to participate, we're going to say you get you some juice, amen, and get some crackers, amen, and next Sunday, wait a minute, when we go forth, you just have that with you, and we will, and you will go at the time, as I said, as the time comes, we will go forth with our Holy Communion. And for those that come in, amen, we're going to have touchless, amen, communion. We will have the communion waiting for you out there, out there in the vestibule. You'll pick it up as you enter service on next Sunday morning. Amen. God has given that to us, amen, that we should do this, amen, and we can do it in a way that is both safe and effective. Amen. The book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, we're going to be looking at verses 10 through 14. That's Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14. Amen. And the word of God reads like this. It says, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. Verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Today we're going to think with this passage of scripture, we're going to go to verse number 11 to get our thought. Uh -huh. Jeremiah 29, 11, which reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And I want to share with everybody that is watching on today. I just want you to know that there will be an end to this. There will be an end to this. Now then, you know, and I know that, as I said, I think people have heard me since, uh, if you will, since this pandemic and things started. We have talked all about it. And I, I mentioned even when it first started, that the Lord put in my mind and in my spirit. Amen. Over in the New Testament where he said that, that these pestilence and these different wars and things were going to come. But he said, and it will pass. And I have been a person who has been, that the Lord has given me, even in the midst of this, said, don't worry about what we're in. You worry about what it's going to be like when we come out of it. Amen. And you work towards you know, getting things prepared for when we come out of it because we, in fact, will come out of this. This is not, amen, where we're going to end up at. Amen. And so this is what I'm trying to let us know on today, amen, that there is an expected end. God has an expected end for this. And we ought to even look amongst ourselves and think about the situation that we're in. Yes. I just want to encourage you that where we are now yes. is not where we're going to end up at. I know that many times, and then, you know, I was even thinking, I know many times, and I heard uh, Sister Amanda kind of encouraging us, even on today, was telling us, amen, that we must know that, we are, that, that, that things with God have a process. Yeah. And that is so true. And I was thinking about that even as I was preparing this message, even on today, she just confirmed really what I was, what I was really getting from God, is that there is things that we have to just go through. There are just things that just have to happen. And sometimes we have to know and understand if we really look back at all of this under
understand that sometimes because we have, in essence, neglected, if you will, God. I have said before and told people all the time, if you really look at it, I know before we talked about how our churches used to be full and used to be overflowing with people coming to service on Sunday morning. Uh -huh. And now it looks like, of course, because of the pandemic and, and social distancing, no one is sitting like coming to church. I'm not knocking it. I'm telling you, amen, if that's where your faith is, stay there, amen. But, but we have found what I have found, amen, more than anything, is that all of a sudden now Facebook is lighting up with folk watching services. People all of a sudden are now kind of trying to get themselves back connected with God. Amen. And man, if you think about it, if we were still going on as we were going, amen, you might not have had people watching you on Facebook or watching YouTube or finding any other kind of way to watch and to get, if you will, connected with God. But all of a sudden, this has come about. And now people, as I said, are trying their best to connect with God. We must understand, as I said before, that we must again strengthen our relationship with Him. Yes. Amen. Our relationship should always be strong with Him. No matter what's going on, when we're in good times. And see, sometimes this is what happens with us, even as, as saints of God. Can I talk to us a bit? Amen. And as saints of God, sometimes when things get to going really well in our lives, and we have really what we would call no concern, no worry, sometimes we tend to forget about God. Amen. We must understand our God is a God. Amen. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He is a God of grace. Yes. But one thing you've got to know about God, God is also a jealous God. Yes, he is. Amen. He is jealous for attention. Amen. He doesn't like it when he does everything for you and you don't take time to say thank you or you don't take time to come back. The thing I like about God is even though he is like that, he does everything for us. All he demands for us is just to say thank you. Thank you. Amen. Just to acknowledge him. Amen. And sometimes I said we get to the point, amen, let's just admit, we know we were going through and we know that we were, that we were kind of, if you will, carefree, not having so many problems, not having so many things going on. And therefore, I believe that the Lord allowed these things to happen. You read back as, as even was talked in Sunday school when prophecy would go forth and, they, and, and God would warn the people. Amen. The main thing he was really warning them back over and over and over again was literally don't forget about me. Yeah. Don't forget to do the things I have commanded you to do. I'm yet taking care of you. I'm doing everything for you. Just don't forget about me. Yeah. That's all he's really saying. And he says, but if you do forget about me, there is a consequence. Uh -huh. There's a price that has to be paid when you forget about about God. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. But one thing is I said, God is a God of mercy. He is a God of grace oh, and a God of compassion. Yes. And also, he is a God also of time. And I don't care how many people can say, even now, they may say, Brother Preacher, you were right. I was in that mess. I was the one that they had forgot about him. But Preacher, you just don't know. Now I'm back with him. Now I'm praying more. Now I'm fasting more. I'm reading my word more. I'm acknowledging God more in everything. And look like things still won't turn. Well, I got news for you, first of all, to let you know that, that I want you to know things will turn. Things will eventually get back. If I'm saying, yes, this is going to pass over. I'm still standing firm on that word. But I want you to know one thing. That it's only going to turn. It's only going to happen in the time that God has appointed. I don't care how much you want to and predict and do all of this stuff. It's not going to happen until God says that it will happen. Right. And we must know God has a timetable. Don't you know God has a timetable? Uh -huh. And you can't change his timetable. I told somebody before that the songwriter once wrote, I believe I talked about it last week, that you can't hurry God. No, no. Amen. You just got to wait. He's a God you can't hurry, but he'll be there. Don't you worry. He may not come when you want him. Oh, my God. I know many of us are sitting here saying right now, I'm tired of wearing masks. I'm tired of social distancing. I'm tired of worrying about am I going to catch COVID. I'm tired of worrying about if my family's going to catch it. I'm tired of, of being isolated. I'm tired of all of this, but I want to let you know something. You can't change anything. It's only going to happen when God says it's time for it to change. Yes. I want you to know, I know I, I said it before, and I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to everybody, letting us know that, as was mentioned earlier, that God is not a microwave God. You can't just, amen, he's not, you know, he's not, not like we do now. We can put something in the microwave, push a button, and then out it comes. Our God does not necessarily work like that. Sometimes God takes us through things. Yeah. He allows us to go through some things so he can literally build some things within us. Yeah. So he can really develop some things that are within us. And I believe in the midst of us going through what we're doing.
doing right now. I believe some of you watching even right now, going through this situation, going through other situations in your life, it's because God is trying to develop something that's within you. Oh my God, he's building something up within you. You shouldn't always take it as a negative thing when you have to go through something. That's just God molding you. That's just God making you. And many times we'll sit there and say, Lord, I'm saying yes to you. Yes to your will and yes to your way. And sometimes I don't believe we really realize what we're saying when we're saying yes. Yeah. When we're saying yes, we're saying, God, develop me. And God, sometimes, Lord, if you develop me, you got to take me through something. Yeah. I got to, amen, I was watching even on last night. They were showing, if you will, they showed a, a, a person, a blacksmith, if you will. They wasn't a blacksmith. They were just people that were out there, and they were making some horseshoes. And they had, if you will, they had tongs, and they had like a long strip of, of, of iron, if you will. And they had to take that iron and put that iron in the fire. Yeah. Then they had to bring it out the fire and take a hammer and knock it up here. Yeah. Put it back in that hole, y'all better help me here. Oh. And they had a mold and brace, God. They had to keep on. Sometimes it looked like that it was done. It looked like it was finished. But when they put it in the mold, it still wouldn't fit properly. So they what, had to what? Put it back in the fire. Yeah. Had to bring it out the fire. Had to go back and, and knock it some more until it fit smoothly into the mold. And then when they got it fit in the mold, you feel like, oh, it's all done now. I'm all fit. I'm all ready. They had to go and knock some holes in. Uh -huh. Oh, thank God for Jesus. Many times you're saying, God, I feel like I'm being knocked down. I feel like I'm being pushed down. I feel like I'm going this way and that way. And God is just saying, I'm yet trying to make something out of you. Yeah. There's some things that are within you that I still got to, I hate to say it like this, but let me just tell you, there's still some things I got to drive out of you. Uh, there's still some people in your life I still got to get away. Therefore, to see some folk can't stand it when you go through the fire. They can't want to be around you when you go through the fire. And God said, sometimes I got to take you through the fire so you can shake some of that stuff off of you. Yes, hallelujah. So here we are. We find this is what happens here. And so I want you to know again, this is what had happened, if you will, in this time. They were in captivity in Babylon. While they were in Babylon, we see what was going on over in Babylon. Over there, amen, there were people that were yet in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. their holy city. Here, as I said, they were comfortable. They were with God. They were in the holy city. And God allowed these people, if you will, his own people to be carried away into captivity. They were there, and God spoke to them. And I know many of y'all, if God spoke to us right now about this COVID situation and said what he told them, if you will, in this verse uh, that we read here in verse number 10, I believe it is, when he talked about it was going to be 70 years before their captivity would be over. Amen. I don't know about you, but see, I, I, I was told even this week that it might not be to the ending part of the year for certain things that I'm, that I'm having to deal with. Someone even asked me before, one of the members called me. I don't mind saying it. I talked to them and they said, well, Brother Preacher, do you think, well, when do you think we'll be back in the church? I'm thinking and they said, you know, I, I, I'm believing it might be the ending part of the year. And for many, just a man, I have to admit that, that, that in my heart I was like saying, and this is like, I don't think we share one of I said, I don't know about another year of this. I don't know about another year, but then I said that I had to, to finally catch myself and say, but Lord, if it's your will. That, 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 that's all we got to do. If, if it's another year, Lord, if it's, no, if it's another two years, another ten years, whatever it is, God, if it's your will, because maybe there's something even within me, maybe there's something even within us that yet needs to be driven out. And God, if that's what it takes, that's what it is. And one thing I want you to know, amen, even thinking about that, some folk would say, oh my God, he is a, isn't he a bad God to have us to go through all of this and have us even go through it another year. As I mentioned before, you got folk in the Bible that if they were here, if they were able to come and stand here, I believe they would look at us and say, y'all haven't been through nothing. Right. You got to understand, that was not a say that was born with the issue of blood. She had it for 12 years. Right. She dealt with it for 12 years. Well, you got these folks here that were in captivity for 70 years. Right. You're going to sit and complain about one single year. You ain't even been through it a day in their mindset. Thank God for Jesus. This is what happens. But I want you to know again, but in the midst of it, you can say all of this, but go back and read what we just read here. I want to encourage you today that God is yet thinking about you. Yeah. Wherever that you are, you're watching this. And even right now, God has you on his mind. He is thinking about you. And the thoughts that he has about you, amen, saith the Lord, are thoughts of peace and not evil. I 
motion of the devil would have you to say. The devil would say to you even right now, you're going through stuff. God has turned his back on you. God is mad at you. God don't like you. God don't love you. That's what the devil would say. But God is yet saying, oh my God, my thoughts towards you are good and are peace and not of evil. Hallelujah. I'm coming to bring peace into your mind. Yeah. I'm coming to develop you the more. I'm coming, oh my God, to strengthen you. I'm coming to encourage you. And I want you to know in my mind, I have an expected end for you. Yes. And I want you to know that you may be in this process even right now. You may be feeling like, amen, as a whole, that we're all in captivity right about now. But God is just saying, I've got an end in sight. I've got an end in sight for you. Thank God for Jesus. I have an end in sight. I have an expected end for you. And I just want to encourage all of us on today. Because all of us have been going through this for about a year or so. But I want to encourage us today that even though we're sitting here and having to come to church with masks on our face, and even though we're having to social distance and we can't hug one another, can't fellowship like we'd like to fellowship with each other, I want you to know this is not the end. The end is not going to be like this. There's going to come a time when God says that now the captivity that we're going through is all over now. Thank God for Jesus. And God is yet going to say, I believe when it's over. I believe he's going to say that even in the midst of this, I believe he will say to all of us, well done. You made it through the trial. Well done. You made it through captivity. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Yes, Lord. I just want to tell you on today that no matter how long it takes, there's an end in sight. And one thing that he said to us, he read in, the, in this book that Jeremiah said, he said, I want to tell you this here, that he's taken us away captive. He's allowed us to be captivated. He's allowed us to be taken away. Thank you, Jesus. But he one day, he's going to bring us back together. Yes, Lord. And then he said to us, when you see that day coming, when it looks like it's about to be over, I know many people will jump up and say, well, since it's about to be over, that means we can relax now. That means we can stop now. But what God is saying, and he said through his prophet, he said to all of us, when you see that end coming, it's time for you to get back down on your knees and to begin to yet praise God. Yet begin to pray to him. Seek his face evermore. Why? Because you've got to understand that when things come, is coming and you got to pray that God manifests himself unto you that God brings it out that God will open the door matter of fact some of us are at the point we've been captivated we've been in captivity maybe not by COVID-19 but there are other situations other things going on and God is yet saying I'm bringing captivity unto an end some of you are trying to walk through a door and God is yet saying, you're standing at the door and he's yet saying, all I want you to do is to seek me at the door. When you get there and you see the door, I want you to knock on the door. Don't just stand there. Don't just stand there, but get active. Knock on the door and say, Lord, open up the door. Here I am. I'm here now. 
you would have died. You would have fell off your rocker. You would have lost your mind. But God, I said, my God is yet holding us. And I'm saying to you and to all of us, even right now, God is yet saying, don't you be stingy with your praises. Don't be stingy with giving him glory. But give God glory and give him praise because you know you should have been dead. You know you should have lost your mind. But God kept encouraging you. God kept uplifting you. Yes, he did. Yes, Lord. There is an end. I said there is an end. There's an end to this. I know it looks crazy. Looks like you're not ever going to get out of this. But there is an end. There's an end to this. So saints of God, as I make my getaway, I'm saying to you, hold on a little while longer. Hang on in there. Don't give up. There is an end. There is an end. Woo! My God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! Let's go. Saints of God. There's an end to this. There is an end to this. There is an expected end to this. God already knows about it. There is an end. Oh my God, there is an end to this. Hey, bless his name. There is an end to this. That's what the Lord shared with me today. There is an end to this. There is an end. Hallelujah. God has an expected end. For us. Yes, he does. There is an end unto this. Hallelujah. Good thoughts toward him. Thoughts of peace. He's got peaceful thoughts to us. Hallelujah. Not thoughts of evil. God's not trying to destroy us. God's not trying to knock us out. No, he's not. I'm just telling y'all, God has not put a hit out on me. Let moms just say it to your own self. God has not put a hit out on me. No, no, no. Amen. God has not put a hit out on me. Oh, like bless his name. Like bless his name. He has not put a hit out on me. He's got thoughts of peace towards us and not thoughts of evil. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Saints, again, I want to encourage you. There is an end to this. I know, as I said before, we've been saying this for the last year. We've been going on, and I've been sharing with people throughout messages, telling people we're going to come out of this, we're going to come out of this. Amen. I know some people may have gotten and felt like it was going to be as I said a microwave for them. Amen. I didn't give. Amen. It's going to be in God's time. But I would say when that time, when we can feel that time come. Yes, yes. It'll be time to pray. Yes, it will. Until that time actually manifests. Oh, Lord, Lord. And then when it manifests, that's when you give him praise for it. You're giving praise for it even now. Matter of fact, you can praise him for it right now because there is an end coming. There is an end to this. And I want to emphasize to many people, I want to emphasize to folk, if the end is not, if the end I'm talking about is not death, the end I'm talking about is not even, is not about heaven. We're going to make it there. But I'm talking about this very situation. I'm speaking to this very situation we are dealing with. There's going to be an end to this. There is going to be an end to this. God has given us an expected end. Thank you, Jesus. So to the saints of God, I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to pray. Because in the midst of everything, as I said, the devil's desire for all of us is to give up. To throw our hands up and say, what's the use? What's the use? I'm tired of this. What's the use? And to give up on God. But we're not going to give up on him. No, no. Because there is an end to this. We just got to go through the process. We gotta go through the process. Amen. So we're just saying yes and saying, Lord, just take us through even today. God, I want to thank you. I want to praise you for every person yes. who has heard this message on today. I want to thank you, God. I want to thank you because emphatically you have shared with us that there is an end to this. We know right now we may be in the clutches of it. We may be getting bent here and there. We may be getting knocked, hit on, beat, yes, yes. placed even in fiery situations. Mm -hmm. But God, I'm thankful Thank you. 
this is not the end of it. It's not the end of it. You watching on today, I'm encouraging you, it's not the end of it. I don't care. You may be at the very, very bottom. Feeling like it's the worst place you have been ever in your life. I want to encourage you, this is not the end of it. God has so much more for you, even right now. Lord, I encourage you a lot. I pray that you would yet encourage your people to yet hang on. Hallelujah. Many people, dear God, the enemy, of course, desires for all of us to throw our hands up and to turn and to walk away. And Lord, I, I have to confess, there are some who probably have done that. And that person may be watching me even right now. And I'm speaking to you now and saying that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you can turn yourself right on back. Yeah. And say, Lord, just put me right on back in the fire. Finish doing whatever it is you need to do with me. Process me. Make me into what I need to be. Develop me. Develop my spirit. Develop my mind. Develop my attitude. Develop me right now. In the name of Jesus. We need it now, God. We need it now, Lord. We're yet surrendering and saying yes to your will on today. We're saying yes, Lord. As we look forward to our expected end, we're saying yes to you. Our mind is saying yes. Our hearts are saying yes. Our soul is saying yes to you, Lord. Saying yes, Lord. Do whatever it is you must do. Do whatever you have to do, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We trust you exclusively, Lord. Knowing again you're not mad. You're not a mad God. You've got thoughts of peace towards us. And not thoughts of evil. That you're leading us towards an expected end. So, Lord, we yet praise you for it. And we yet glorify you. And Lord, we want to say thank you. I want to say thank you because Lord, right about now is about a year. We're coming up on a year. And God, I'm saying thank you for yet taking us through even this year. Hallelujah. Thank you for taking us through these times. Thank you, Jesus. These difficult times, Lord. These, these times, oh God, of scarcity. These times of captivity. God, I thank you for taking us through yet even today. Now, Lord, continue to bless and strengthen your people everywhere. That person who is going through, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Bless that mother. Bless that father, oh God. Give them strength in their body. Many, oh God, in the midst of this captivity have lost loved ones. Loved ones have passed on in the midst of this status of captivity. Lord, I pray that you would comfort them right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Send forth your comfort. Send forth your peace, oh God, to your people in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 God bless him. And there may be someone even watching now. This is part of our mission of the church. Not about adding souls to the church, but adding souls to the kingdom. And so here I am again saying to you, if you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, now is the time to get to know him. While we're going through these times, as I say, as our nation, as this world, is enduring going through a time of captivity. You need to get captivated by the Lord. You need to let him catch a hold to your mind. And you need to receive him into your heart right now. And it's very simple. As I said, the Bible does say very simple. Amen. That if you would just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is that simple. All you got to do is speak it out. I, don't, I can't lay hands on you. I can't lay hands through this, through this uh, video. Amen. But it's in your mouth. If you just speak it and believe it and confess, God will do it. So even now, just prepare to me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for how you've watched over me and how you cared for me. Now, Lord, I come to you repenting of all sin that I have done. I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and to be my Savior. Your word says that if I would just confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. So, Lord, I'm confessing now that God sent you to die on the cross for my sins. And that furthermore, he raised you the third day for my justification. Now, Lord, because I confess that, 
And because I believe all of that in my heart, according to your word, I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Right where you are, right where you are, right where you are. That's it. You've got to give him thanks for saving you. You've got to give him thanks for saving you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. At this time, amen, let's receive Missionary Buckner. She comes with our final selection for this telecast. God bless her. What do you want the Lord to say? Oh, 